Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to my channel. This is Brad with Being Chill. Today I want to talk about the recent leaked benchmarks of the M1 MacBook Pro, the M1 MacBook Air, and the M1 Mac Mini that just came out yesterday. Now before we get into that, I do want to ask if you're not already to please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week, Monday through Friday, so if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell, and you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. Now let's get into it. Yesterday Geekbench released version 5.3 of their software which included a universal binary that allows you to run these benchmarks natively on these new Apple Silicon Macs with the M1 chips and very shortly after that we started seeing benchmarks come out with the new MacBook Air and they have some pretty impressive scores. Now the one we're going to take a look at here has 8 gigabytes of RAM and the single core score is 1687 and the multi core score is 7433. Now that is very impressive, I'll talk about that compared to some of the other Macs in a minute, but for now just know that that is a very good score. And we've also seen that the base frequency clock speed on these CPUs is coming in at 3.2 gigahertz, even though we haven't seen anything else about it. This can be assumed to be the correct clock speed for these devices. Then about six hours later, the M1 MacBook Pro's benchmark started being leaked. And from there, we saw a 16 gigabyte model have a single core score of 1714 and a multi-core score of 6802. Now we did expect the single core score to be better in the MacBook Pro due to the active cooling system, but it's very interesting to see that there's over a 600 point difference between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, with the MacBook Pro having a worse performance. Now I imagine this is either a discrepancy with the test or maybe a faulty chip in the MacBook Pro. I can't say for certain, but it is definitely interesting to see this. Maybe somebody down in the comments can let me know what the difference would be, or maybe it's even the extra RAM in the device slowed down the benchmark. I don't really know for certain, but as people get their hands on these and we start seeing more benchmarks come out, maybe it'll shed some light on the reason why we're seeing these results. Now the same clock speed is on the MacBook Pro that was on the MacBook Air, and that's gonna be the same 3.2 gigahertz that we saw previously. And lastly, we started seeing leaks come out about the new Mac Mini with the M1 chip. This model also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the single core score was lower than the MacBook Pro coming in at 1682, but the multi-core score was higher than the MacBook Pro coming in at 7097. So it is definitely interesting to see that the MacBook Air still remains king here, even though it is the only one without an active cooling system in it. But another important thing to note here about the Mac Mini is that the base clock frequency is lower on this device at 3.04 gigahertz versus the 3.2 of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. So I don't know if that's intentional or once again, if this is like a faulty chip, but as we get more data, we'll start to see if that's consistent across all the other Mac minis or not. Now, what's so impressive about these scores is basically Geekbench is saying that the processors in the M1 chip are faster than any iOS device on the market currently available, including the new devices with the A14 chip like the iPhone 12 and the iPad Air 4. However, that was to be kind of expected. So the truly impressive thing here is that the single core performance on the M1 is actually faster than any Mac currently available on the market today. Now that includes the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the i9 clocked at 2.4 gigahertz and even the Mac Pro which can cost up to $50,000 and has the Intel Xeon W chip in it with up to 3.5 gigahertz. So the multi-core performance is not the best out of any Mac that is currently available. However, it is very good and it should definitely start raising some eyebrows when you see that it's only about 500 points lower than the Mac Pro. And that's coming from a $999 MacBook Air that doesn't even have a fan inside of it. So that should really be turning some heads when you see how close these scores are and when you consider the price and how new these devices actually are. Now, with all that being said, I do expect the 16 inch MacBook Pro to outperform the M1 chips in a GPU benchmark simply because the 5500M or 5600M discrete GPUs are going to likely outperform the integrated graphics on the M1 chip. Now, I don't think it's gonna be that substantial of a difference, definitely not to justify the $1,000 to $2,000 price difference between the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the $999 MacBook Air. So I think that most people are gonna see probably about a 75% performance difference between the two. And I think that most people can definitely justify picking up the cheaper device in a sacrifice for that little bit of a performance loss, especially considering how great the performance is on these new CPUs. It is definitely interesting to see such a wide margin of difference between the benchmarks on these devices, especially considering the MacBook Pro apparently has a worse multi-core performance than the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air. 
However, I think that that's going to change as more benchmarks come out and we get more data. And I'm definitely curious to see how these devices handle more extreme loads under more stressful benchmarks that maybe are going to push the cooling in these devices to the limits, as well as to see how the GPU performs in comparison to a discrete GPU. Nevertheless, these results are very promising, and I think the new MacBook Air is a hell of a machine for only $999 US dollars. And I think anybody that is looking to pick up a new Mac, well, this would be the perfect time to do it, as you can get a killer machine for even a third of the price of what you used to have to pay like I did with the 16 inch MacBook Pro sitting right behind me. So that's all I've got for this video. If you guys learned a little bit, make sure you smash that like button and let me know down in the comments what you think of these benchmarks and how you think these devices are gonna perform and other types of benchmarks and what you expect to see from these devices in the coming weeks. Now, once again, I upload new videos every week, Monday through Friday. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you can stay up to date on all the latest tech news with me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.